Hey guys, before we jump into film analysis here of Western Michigan, just wanted to do two things here. Number one, thank you to all the members of the channel. I appreciate all of your guys' support. I'll throw your names on the screen. I appreciate each and every one of you. Number two, I apologize for the shorter length of this analysis video and lack of a second video this week. My goal has always been to get at least one offensive and one defensive video of 10 plus plays out per week of um, uh, each game week. Wasn't able to do that this week. Some crazy things going on um, just personally, but uh, you know, I'll do my best in future weeks to provide that. But I uh, appreciate all your guys' support. Enjoy the analysis, and hopefully I'll be back with a bit more and things will calm down uh, next week. Go Blue. And bright future for this season. McNamara with flags now. Long sideline shot past the sticks coming back. Really, really smart play here from Vistardis. This is what you get from having a veteran at the center position. You can see the clap here from McNamara. That's going to elicit the offsides here. Now, this isn't a called like clap and snap. This is just something that Vistardis, you're going to see, he's going to point at this gentleman who is now offsides and looking like a silly man. And both him and McNamara, watch their eyes. Okay, I'm going to skip forward here a little bit. You see, boom, there's the point. McNamara is going to check over here. He's not reading coverage. He's looking out of the corner of his eye for the official down here is going to throw the flag. You'll see the flag coming into frame. That's what he's looking at. Beyond that, you're going to have a couple routes going out here that none of them are like super deep. It's more of just a bunch of comeback routes. Um, so that flag just essentially gives the go-ahead for Cade McNamara to throw whatever he likes. That's really the value in this play. So immediately he's looking at what's what's going to be there already, what's the best option to get some yards, and he sees Cornelius Johnson one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Yes, he's covered, but this is a matchup that you can safely go for. You already have the penalty, so this is a free play, right? At this point, it's just one-on-one. -on -one. Cornelius Johnson, good pass, gets the completion. Favorable spot for 10 yards, but regardless of the play, Michigan would have gotten a free down. So this just goes to show kind of the value of there's the clap, boom, offsides. No, notice how no one else in the offensive line moves. That's because Cade McNamara doesn't ask for the ball here. This is snapped simply because Vistardis recognizes the player has jumped offsides. Boom, I'm just going to snap it. I don't care what Cade McNamara is saying because we're going to get some free yards here. So no one else moves because this is just an uncalled snap. And it's a very smart play from your veteran center who had an excellent game. So rest of the routes don't really matter too much. This is more of just taking advantage of the Western Michigan uh, mishap and getting the first down as a result of a nice throw and catch. Fantastic throw, fantastic catch. Now here's Blake Cole. He knifes his way into the secondary. Split zone for 18 yards for Blake Corum. Two things I want to point out from this angle here. First thing, you're going to have the split zone here. Uh, Schoonmaker and Bell are both going in motion this way. Watch number six here. He's going to vacate the middle of the field as he reacts to this motion for both of these players. That's going to really be the catalyst for what opens up uh, Blake Corum in the open space here. So let's watch that first. You can see, boom, he's reacting to that right here. Oh, he's out of position, right? Blake Corum turns on the Jets right about there, accelerates, recognizes that gap, and number six is out of position. Second thing I want you to pay attention to is Cornelius Johnson. He's got one-on-one -on -one block here. His main objective should be to get inside, stay engaged, and that should give Blake Corum the opportunity, if he breaks it to the second level, to get a touchdown. Now, if we skip forward here, you can see right here, Cornelius Johnson needs to turn his body inwards, right? It looks like he's still running a route. If he turns his body inwards and just gets a block here, this is a touchdown. Blake Corm's already made the safety miss with a cut. Instead, because Cornelius Johnson doesn't, number seven makes the play and stops touchdown. All right, let's move to the other view here. Front side, you're going to have, um, I mentioned Scoomaker going to the split zone block here. Uh, you're going to have Stuber. Filiaga and Vistardis all do a good job here, especially Vistardis on the front side. You're going to see him on 27 right there, really get his feet moving, create that hole for Blake Corn to cut off of. Um, on the back side here, tough assignment for the three guys on the back side here, especially Keegan. He has to work his way inside, turn this nose guard this way, try to get some movement to create that left side of the hole. Quite a reach block for Hayes as well to get to the linebacker number three. 
Honig Ford just has to keep his outside arm free and then work to the second level. Uh, they all do a pretty good job at that. You got to be careful if you're Hayes. Notice the hand on the back of the jersey here. He could get called for holding in the future if he keeps that up. Good job from Keegan, especially here, to turn his body inwards. Again, notice this hole created, and that's mainly because of the movement Vistardis did and the turn in the body that you see out of Keegan on the left guard position there. So good job from hunting for getting to the second side. And then the rest is all Blake Coram creating space. Again, Johnson, stay engaged, man. Um, but really good play for the Wolverines. Coram back in, 11th play of the drive. McNamara swings it to court. Blocker's out in front. He's at the 10. He's at the pylon. Little flare screen left here to Coram. Really well executed. You got bunch tight left here. Uh, with Sainer still, Bell, and all, okay? And they're the main blocks here. All these guys, the offensive linemen, they're just don't let anything in, right? It's going to go into Blake Corum. This is the design play. It's going to be a quick throw. So regardless of what happens, your key matchups here are just get your guys in the trips to um, just seal off any of the flowing bodies here on the second level from Western Michigan. Sainer still is going to be the primary kickout blocker here. He's going out to the defensive back wide. Uh, in a cut block. So these are the three guys to really focus in on as this play develops, right? So good job turning their bodies right away. Um, Eric Alls identified 27. This is the guy he's going to get. You have uh, number six here. This is where Ronnie Bell is lined up ready uh, to get his block. You can see he's engaged at this point right now. So they're all in really good position, right? As they start to flow, 27 doesn't even realize that Eric All is here. So he's already probably out of this play. Bell has really good positioning. Um, he's got the inside. Again, his butt is turned in the correct direction here. And really watch what Bell does here. He, he, he keeps engaged, keeps engaged, lets him get upfield a bit once Blake Corum is past him, right? Fine, you can work your way upfield, but I'm going to run with you, right? At this point, he's running with him. And then watch this clever thing that Ronnie Bell does at the end of this play. I'm going to turn my body, boom, right there and seal you off. Um, and then Mike Sainer is still with probably the critical block on number seven here. Cut block right at the midsection, cut his legs, and now you just have a winning matchup, right? You got Blake Corum one-on-one -on -one against number 26. Look at all of the screen space. That's a matchup you'll take every single time. Nice angle here to get 26 to try to commit. Plenty of green space, and that's six for Blake Corum. So just really well designed, excellent blocks, especially from Blake Corum, and Mike Sainer still did exactly what they had to do. Uh, to create enough space for Blake Corm to make the final guy miss. And that's a touchdown. Here comes a blitz. McNamara, one on one, shot down the sideline, looking for Ronnie Bell. Stop. Oh, Ronnie Bell with the ridiculous catch that somehow got called back. Okay, well, we'll talk about the call in a second. So they're actually going to drop number six into the flats here. Um, this safety is going to commit to Eric All on kind of like a skinny post route. Hard to tell exactly what it is. Got one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. We won't really pay attention to what's going on down here. So for protection here, um, you're going to have these two linebackers blitzing. I mentioned number six going out here, and then these two. So you got four men, um, five kept in for pass protection, plus Corum uh, to pick up one of the blitzing linebackers. So protection is good, right? We move forward here a little bit. Boom, good job from Blake Corum picking up that final linebacker on his delayed blitz a little bit. Everyone else picks up the guy well. Um, relatively quick pass, um, but even so, pretty clean pocket for Cade McNamara to operate in. So it's a good read for Cade McNamara. His eyes are initially going straight to uh, this defensive back since he is kind of responsible for Eric All. They're kind of bracketing, I guess you could say, right here. Um, that's the recognition that Cade McNamara needs to see this one-on-one -on -one fly route, uh, fade route, I guess you'd call it a fade, um, to Ronnie Bell on the outside. Okay, so for the actual call, um, you'll be surprised to, to hear that I think it is BS, <laughs> certified BS. First of all, ridiculous catch. So here's the initial push off, right? I'll say, sure, that is a push off. You have the grab there from the defensive back. Here's another slight push off right here. I'm calling it 50-50. Again, there's another grab right there. You call this hand fighting, okay? You, you, I rarely see this ever called um, one way or the other, that's hand fighting. It happens on almost every play. Um, beyond that, just a ridiculous catch from Ronnie Bell. One of the best catches I've ever seen. I don't know what he has on his glove to make the ball just stick on that, but um, really ridiculous and honestly just a horrendous call. Um, but good protection, good read from Cade McNamara, and obviously phenomenal catch that 
Uh, the officiating crew should be fired for penalizing. Damara trying to identify the blitz if it's coming. It does not. He's going to take a shot. Looking for Ronnie Bell. Bell's got it! Blake Ray has walked to the end zone. 76 yards! All right, Ronnie Bell on a big touchdown here. He went to go party with the Michigan basketball team afterwards there. Uh, looking at the routes here, you're going to have a little wheel route out of Blake Corum. Hard to tell what Eric Gall is attempting because he kind of gets mugged in like double, triple coverage there. So a lot of traffic. You're going to have a little smash route here out of Sainer still slot fade for Bell. Obviously, that's what we're going to be looking at. And then at the bottom of your screen, you have a little comeback route for Cornelius Johnson. All right, so I'll go through the routes here real quick. Boom, you can see all of that. Nothing's really open that you see on the top of your screen. Um, I mentioned the double coverage out of there. Eric All, the wheel that Blake Corum is going on, or actually it's kind of just to the flats, I should say, not really a wheel route. Um, but nothing's really there. Double covered on Senior still as well. So um, you can see the eyes for Cade McNamara. He's going straight towards number two. He's looking, what is number two coming where is he going? He's going straight there. Okay, boom. I'm going to have single coverage right here. That's what I want to see. And he takes a shot. All right, so that's kind of what we have in terms of protection. Uh, it looks like it was possibly going to be a massive blitz here for Western. They end up only sending three, obviously. Boom, boom, and boom. Michigan has five in to protect. No issues whatsoever. Quick release from Cade McNamara, plus the only three on five. Nothing issues. No issues there for uh, pass protection. So, Moving forward here, let's look at the routes. Uh, you can see bottom of your screen now, there's Cornelius Johnson. He's covered pretty well. One-on-one um, -on -one coverage with a ton of field, right? Look at all the green grass that Ronnie Bell has to work with. So just throwing to that area, I really like the amount of air that is put under this ball for Ronnie Bell to work. Again, a little bit of a push-off here. Surprised they don't call this a offensive pass interference, whatever, right? But anyway, plenty of space for Bell to create, run under that ball. It is hit in stride, defensive back catches air, and the rest is Ronnie Bell waltzing into the end zone. Uh, good job overall. Good read, good pass, good catch, and that's six. A part of you triggers to the next, okay, I've got to go to the football game. Haskins on third down, breaks free. And split zone touchdown for Hazan Haskins here, looking at the split zone action. Let's look at the backside first. You're going to have Joel Honig forward uh, blocking the defensive end right here. Schoonmaker is going out. A reach block here to the second level on number six. And then you're going to have Eric all on the split uh, split zone action coming down for whoever is flowing into the play here. So these are your backside blocks. Main thing to look at is number 84 there, Honig Ford. He needs to get his head on the opposite side here. Okay, he needs to be working on this side because otherwise this defensive end is flowing down and that's actually going to redirect Haskins on this run. You see he has to cut to the right because of that. Now, uh, besides that, Schoonmaker needs to move his body similarly to the other side. He should be right about here instead of being on this side. Um, as a result of that, he could have been called for a hold right there. Eric All does a good job on number seven there uh, with the cut block. All right, moving to the other side here, we got Ryan Hayes and Trevor Keegan. Keegan gets a little bit fortunate. Again, I don't know why. Well, I guess I do understand because this is where the split zone action is heading. But um, good movement here from both. Hayes and uh, Trevor Keegan. Good spacing. I like having the arm there for Hayes on Trevor Keegan. I'm pretty fortunate that the shed of this lineman on uh, Keegan just happens to be at the same time that uh, Haskins is hitting that backside hole because of Honig Ford, um, his block kind of blowing up there. So because 55 there sheds Trevor Keegan at the right time, that helps form that hole that you see for Haskins. Um, nothing really to report on Hayes there. So on the front side, uh, good job from Vistardis especially. He clears out his guy, and that's the key block right there, having him right here um, being able to really set this block, displace him behind the line of scrimmage. That's a good one, and then good double on the front side. Nothing really to report on Jones. 27, um, could have made the play, but he comes up uh, into this B gap here, and he's taken care of as a part of his flow there. So then you have Haskins one-on-one -on -one against the safety. He trucks him, carries on into the end zone for a touchdown. So good job. Attention to the end of this half and second half is how well are we playing as we get tired? Blake Corum pick up here on split zone. Again, let's look backside. So you're going to have Schoonmaker trying to get to the inside here of number one. Really good defensive end for Western Michigan. He's firing out on the inside here. So main thing here is just try to get, try to remain 
inside of him and get him upfield. Uh, you're going to have uh, Eric All coming on the backside here, picking up anyone that's flowing through on the backside of this play. Just cut them. Don't let them get into this place. So you can see pretty good job for Schoonmaker. Gets a yard or two of depth on number one there, that defensive end. Does his job by not letting him go down the line of scrimmage a little bit better than what we saw of Honig for last time. Good cut block from Eric All in the end, number 20. You can see there that linebacker flying up. Good job. Takes him out of the play. All right, looking at... Um, uh, Hayes and Keegan. Hayes is, is releasing to the second level for this linebacker. If he decides to fly up here, that's where Hayes is looking. He Since this guy vacates, he's just kind of here to just help with anybody. And then you're going to have a one-on-one -on -one block here with Keegan. Keegan does a pretty good job here. You can see number eight firing inside. Um, he actually could have done a little bit better to stay engaged with that. He, he loses his hips um, and number eight is, is able to get into the backfield. Luckily, he's able to stay engaged Keegan a little bit to maintain that block enough to get there. So on the front side here, you're going to have a double team between Vistardis uh, and Filiaga right here bet before Vistardis releases to the second level to pick up this linebacker. Okay, so good double initially, good pop. Vistardis realizes, okay, it's my time to release and get 27. Good job there. Gets movement back turned for that linebacker. So Vistardis, again, creating the hole for this one. He had a really, really good game. And good movement from Filiaga. So obviously it started on the double team, but he's able to get movement, displaces this guy a couple yards. Then the outside, you have Stuber on this defensive end. He's going to fly upfield. That's fine if you're Michigan. You let him do that. That's not where the play is going. So then it's essentially just a one-on-one -on -one with Corum and the defensive back. Good shoestring tackle there. But Corum does break that, picks up an extra couple yards. Uh, but good play overall, especially Vistardis and Filiaga on the front side. About, we don't need to be patient. Let's continue to put our foot on the gas. Corum again. Corum with the belly run here. So looking at the backside, pretty simple. You're just going to have a double team between Vistardis and Keegan right here. One-on-one uh, -on -one block on Hayes here. Um, the goal here for this double team is one of them will release um, to this linebacker who will be coming up. It will be, in this case, uh, Ryan Hayes or I'm sorry, that's uh, Keegan. Keegan will, will disengage here, pick up that linebacker who's flowing to the backside B-gap, boom, picks that up. So good movement overall off of the double team. Good job appropriately timed from Keegan to disengage with that double team and pick up that linebacker. So backside's looking really good here. On the front side, um, main thing, Filiaga doesn't do the best job staying engaged with number eight. Good little dip there from that defensive lineman. So he does kind of get out, of, get himself out of the play by going too far upfield. You'd like to see Filiaga push him down the line this way instead of allowing him into the backfield back here. Um, so maybe that first step was a little bit too far forward, um, gave too much room uh, for the defensive lineman to make that move into the backfield. Ended up kind of forcing the hand of Corm to make that little cut right there. So uh, stay a little bit more engaged, and that would have uh, sued this play a little bit better. Um, beyond that, double team here from Eric All and uh, Andrew Stuber on the front side. Boom and boom. And then uh, going to fall off and pick up this uh, second linebacker right here flowing up into the play side B gap. That's what it's looking like at least. Um, I think that linebacker is a little bit scared about this lane that's kind of forming right here. And that's why instead of filling uh, this C gap, I believe, right here, um, he, he's looking for this cutback lane um, that did look pretty uh, pretty reasonable for Blake Corum. So um, because of that, uh, it kind of makes the job of the double. The double wasn't the cleanest between Eric All and Stuber, right? Um, but Blake Corum does a good job reading this. Um A.J. Henning on the outside. This is the main block that could have been much better. So he is getting inside of this guy, which is appropriate, um, but he becomes disengaged, and that guy ends up making the tackle. So good blocks by the offensive lineman. Just want A.J. Henning to do a little bit better job on the outside.